Hi, and welcome back to Science with Miss Wardell. Today, we're on page 382 and 383, and we're talking about the water cycle. Water is always moving. In fact, water moves continuously from Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back to Earth. Today, as we read, there is a cause or a cause tells why something happens. We know that. We know that because of cause and effect that we've studied. Draw one line under each cause, okay? So why something happens. The sun heats the ocean. This causes the water to vapor, evaporate and become water vapor. And the water vapor mixes with other gases and moves up high in the air. So I heard something in that very first paragraph. So this causes water to evaporate and become water vapor. What causes that? The sun heats the ocean. This is the cause. We learned the other day that if you heat things up and you get more heat, then you get condensation, right? So as, or sorry, as you, you heat up, you get evaporation. If you lose heat, you get condensation. In paragraph two, it says, as the water vapor rises, it cools. If it loses enough heat energy, it condenses to form water droplets. So this would be that condensation we were talking about. This water can fall back to earth as precipitation and precipitation can be rain, sleet, snow, or hail. The type of precipitation that falls depends on the temperature of the air around it, right? So in this case, it's not gaining heat, but it is losing heat. So if it loses enough heat and energy. After water falls, it moves across land and some water flows underground. This is an this is groundwater. Groundwater and surface water flow back to the ocean. More water in the ocean is heated and vapor evaporates again. This never ending movement of water between Earth's surface and the air is called the water cycle. Right? So here, once again, as it goes back into the ocean, it is being heated. So more water in the ocean is heated. Going back and forth. This never ending cycle. So let's take a look at this water cycle. Here it says the sun's energy warms the surface of the ocean or other bodies of water and some of the water evaporates and enters the air as water vapor. So it's getting heated and it evaporates into the air. Then as the water rises, it cools. So as it goes up, it cools um, and it condenses to form clouds. These tiny water droplets in the clouds bump into each other, making large droplets. As the droplets become too heavy to stay in the air, they fall to the ground and the earth as precipitation or rain. And some precipitation soaks into the water, into the ground. Precipitation can also run over the ground and flow into streams, lakes, rivers, and eventually back into the ocean where it starts all over again. Where it starts all over again. So the sun and the water cycle. What role does the sun play in the water cycle? Well, it causes the water to heat, right? So the sun causes water to evaporate from Earth's land. That's what's happening here, right? The sun causes water to evaporate from 
the surface. Period. And think about what happens if you didn't have that. Without this evaporation, there could be no water vapor in the air or no precipitation. So without it, without it, you would have no precipitation. So without the heat from the sun, there would be no evaporation um, condensate or uh, water vapor or precipitation. No precipitation. So meaning no rainfall, right? Or snow or hail or whatever this takes form as, right? All right, guys, that's it for today. We'll see you and see you next time. Goodbye.